Hello, I just bought this uh, 40 amp MPPT controller. It's a Bouge RV. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, off eBay for 25 bucks shipped. I thought that was a heck of a deal. Nice little controller. And I uh, thought I'd make a nice little repair video. But uh, try as I might, I could not fix this. That's because it's not broken. I cannot find a thing wrong with it. It's uh, running right now on my test panels. Uh, but I thought it'd be a nice little video to uh, look at what's inside and talk about the difference between positive and negative ground uh, controllers and what you have to watch out for. This was a custom return and I'm sure that uh, they did something on the hookup because of this uh, because it is a positive ground that made this thing look like it wasn't working and of course no one knows how to test anything so uh, it gets put on eBay. You can find these under a variety of different names they all have these two buttons here and a big heat sink on the back. It's kind of a nice little controller the uh, display uh, can do a bunch of things amps, watts, total for the day, select I mean, it even does time and the date. So, uh, right now I'm at 36.7 on the panels. So let's look inside. So here's your inductor for the switcher. You got a little USB power supply over here. There's a power supply and a control circuit here to uh, run the FETs. You got your input caps, your output caps, a couple of fuses here. And uh, this thing protects against uh, reverse voltages on the input and the output. These two FETs here are for the uh, output, you know, uh, switching for the for lights or something. I'll tell you, I've had a couple of controllers. Never could figure out how to make those things work. They just, you know, come on randomly and they don't tell you what, how to really do it. Uh, this little FET over here is reverse pr protection on the input side. These two FETs are the input switchers for the uh, coil and here we got two flyback diodes. These are the current sense for the input and the current sense for the output and these four little packages here believe it or not are the FETs that uh, protect against the reverse voltage on the output uh, you have to be able to put 40 amps through these. Uh, they're not even heat synced. So I don't know. But I certainly wouldn't want to use these over this whole control over 20 amps. So anytime you got something from China, be conservative. So let's talk about positive and negative ground. This is a simplified buck converter that you'll, you'll see commonly. You'll have a solar panel, you'll charge up the capacitor, you'll pulse this FET, and what happens when you when the FET turns on, you put current through this inductor. It takes a while for it to build up, and at a prescribed time by the regulator, it'll turn off. When it turns off, it's got this stored energy, and that stored energy goes through this diode here. And that's how you charge your battery. And if you look, the input negative and the output negative are basically connected to together. There might be a very low ohm resistance between these two, so never do anything connecting directly to the to the panel. Uh, don't have wiring that'll short this out, otherwise your current sense won't work, but at least everything's at the same potential. I run a lot of microprocessor systems on mine. Uh, I heat water with the panels and I like to be able to measure the voltage with the microprocessor of the panels and uh, this makes it fairly simple because it's a common ground. Now this is what this this controller is. This is the positive ground which doesn't mean you're like grounding it, it's just the positive is common. So this is between the positive terminal on the input and the positive terminal on the output. There's basically a direct connection there there might be a little bit of current sense, but 
these two will be at the same potential. But this negative, uh, compared to the battery ground, can change wildly with voltage. So here's how this thing works. We have this reverse protection fit, and this doesn't turn on unless the panel's uh, wired up the right way. Here you have the switcher. There's two of these in parallel. Like I say, we charge up this capacitor, we dump current into the inductor, and then we have the flyback diode. And this is the four little FETs there for the reverse polarity in case you hook up the battery backwards. So, if they connected anywhere from the negative of the panel to like the negative of the battery, you'd have an uncontrolled condition. It would just keep charging the battery. Uh, you have to be a little careful with these. Like I say, the panel has to be totally separate of anything else. But uh, that's how it works. So, if you actually get one of these and it's broken, uh, you can look on the, the, there's three terminals in here, and uh, you can go with an ohmmeter and check to see if they're shorted. Uh, these FETs here, if you're careful, you could actually just jumper this out, because it really doesn't matter if you're careful about not hooking the battery up backwards. All these do is when the batteries connect, they turn fully on. You got you a couple fuses here. And this is the reverse FET on the panels. Uh, these two FETs down here are for the light output. But uh, that's all it is. Uh, this seems to be you know reasonably well made. Like I say, they're all rated far more current than what you'd normally want to run all the time. Uh, the only problem I found with this is that they epoxied on to this uh, little insulator here. And the epoxy is broken off. So I'll stick some rubber stuff on that, but all in all, it's not a bad little controller, especially for 25 bucks. Thanks for watching.